Actors coverage of the Republican National Convention in Cleveland. Joining us on the phone because this is a breaking news situation, the Republican nominee for President Donald Trump. So, top of the broadcast, we were discussing uh, the terrible police assassinations. I think it's domestic terrorism. And whether the Republican Party is going to make that, that issue, killing police officers, a campaign issue. Will you do that? Of course, it's a big issue. It's a horrible issue, and it's going to be a very important one. It's called law and order. We want law and order, and that's going to be one of my big issues and always has been. What about the Black Lives Matter movement? Will they be singled out as a provocateur in this terrible situation? Well, you see them marching, and you see them on occasion, at least. I've seen them where they're essentially calling death to the police, and that's not acceptable. Whether you like them or don't like them, that bill is not acceptable. But I've seen it, and you've seen it. When you say it's not acceptable, if you are elected president, what can you do about a group like that? Well, I think you have to look into it very seriously, because people get themselves into big jams for saying a lot less than that. I mean, I've seen them marching down the street, essentially calling death to the police. And I think we're going to have to look into that, especially in light of what's happening with these maniacs going and shooting our police. When you say look into it, there's a constitutional right, of course, to freedom of assembly and free speech. Uh, are you saying that you would order the attorney general to look into it for possible charges? When you see something like that taking place, that's really a threat if you think about it. And when you see something like that taking place, we are going to have to perhaps talk with the attorney general about it or do something. But at a minimum, we're going to have to be watching because that's really bad stuff. And it's happened more than once. Do you believe the group Black Lives Matter is a fuse lighter in the assassinations of these police officers? Well, certainly in certain instances they are, and they certainly have ignited uh, people, uh, and you see that. You see that all over, and I think it's, uh, it's a very, very serious situation, and we just can't let it happen. Now, everybody's free to say what you want to see, say up to, a, up to a point, but when you're calling death to police and to kill the police, essentially, which is what they said, uh, that's a real problem, Bill. That's a real big problem. You know by saying that, that the press that doesn't like you, the far left uh, media, will now start to say that you're a racist again. You know that that's what's going to happen. Well, I'm probably the least racist person there is, and I'm doing very well. African community, the African American community, I'm going to bring jobs back to the country, and nobody can bring them back, and you understand that, but nobody can bring them back like I bring them back. Our jobs have been stripped, and whether you're talking about African American, whether you're talking about Hispanic, whether you're talking about Asian, whether you're talking about anybody in this country, we're going to bring jobs back. And, you know, a big problem that we have, you take a look at the African American youth. They have a 48 percent and even more than that unemployment rate. It's yeah, we talked about this before. Most of that is education driven. Um, let's let's turn to the convention. Uh, the Ohio governor, John Kasich, should be at the convention, is not. Have you spoken with him? Uh, how do you feel about that? Look, I beat him very badly. I won 38 states. Uh, I won the highest number of votes in the history of the Republican Party. Uh, second was very, very far away. Uh, I beat him very, very soundly. And you have to understand, this was a contentious, some people say the most contentious primary they've ever seen either party. If I were him and got beaten that badly, I probably wouldn't show up either. He has a problem, though. He signed a pledge. And from a standpoint of honor, I think he should show up. I also think this. If this were the Democratic convention, I think he should show up because it's good for Ohio. I wanted it to be here, and we had lots of choices. I wanted it to be in Ohio. I recommended Ohio, and people fought very hard that it be in Ohio. It's a tremendous economic development event, and you look at the way it's going so far, it's very impressive. I wanted it to be here. The Republicans wanted it to be here. But honestly, even if this were for the Democrats, he should at least show up and say hello and say, how are you doing? He got beaten very, very badly. He could have, you know, left. He should have left probably many weeks earlier than he did. But he just hung he, around. Do you think he's been a sore loser? Well, I don't want to say that. But you know what? 
uh, it was a very contentious primary. He lost very, very badly. And maybe if I were in his position, I wouldn't show up either. Okay. Let's uh, go to 60 Minutes. Okay. Were they fair to you in the edit? I think so. I really think so. I mean, she asked questions, and, you know, I was against the war in Iraq. And uh, if you take any candidate, and I don't care who, I can go through hundreds, you're always going to have differences in terms of what you were with and what they were with. So, But I was, uh, I was against the war in Iraq, and Mike Pence, who has been so fantastic and so well-received, and you see what's going on, you see the love in this massive arena that I'm about to go into very soon. But you see the kind of love and enthusiasm in that arena. It's incredible. And I think a lot of it is the fact that they really liked my choice. But, you know, he's made over the years, you know, many years ago, he's made things, uh, decisions that were different uh, than I would have made. But I was against the war in Iraq. I said it was going to destabilize the Middle East. It has. And right now the Middle East is in the worst shape it's ever been in. And this is after spending trillions of dollars and thousands and thousands of American lives. Yeah, it's and a we're mess. There's no doubt now, about Bill, it. we were 15 years ago when we started. Now, I think Republicans generally like uh, Governor Pence uh, as a VP, but the liberal press right away tried to demonize him as a right-wing fanatic, a religious fanatic, um, because of his very pro-life stance. Um, did you see those articles? Did you see that commentary? And how did you react to that? I see it a little bit, but I think overall he's gotten a tremendous response. I don't think I could have picked anybody that, frankly, would have gotten as good a response. And the party itself loves him. They love him. And I've seen it. I've been with them. They really liked the choice. And it was my number one choice. It was really terrific. And I mean, I'll go a step further with the press. Because of what had happened, the tragedy, as you understand, in Nice, uh, I delayed it for a day. If I would have had that news conference that morning, right after the horrible event that took place in France, that would have been catastrophic. It would have been so disrespectful, and I would have taken a lot of heat. By delaying it for a day, they said, oh, maybe he's not sure of his choice. I was 100 percent sure of my choice. It was made up. It was pure fiction by the press. But that's the way it is. I will say this. I'm very happy with Mike. I cannot believe how well-received he is. No. In fact, much better than I even thought, Bill. And you don't really need any more flamboyance. You, I know you understand that. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you don't really need that. You, I think you have that category covered. And that, in that regard, when you speak on Thursday evening, what is going to be the theme of your remarks, other than the general, let's make America great again, all right, what, what are you going to hit there? Just give us a little preview. Well, I have many themes, actually, bro. This is a speech that's going to be a relatively long speech, and I have many themes. And one of them is obviously law and order, and that's coming up more and more because I'm feeling more and more strongly about it when you see what's going on yeah, with, sure. Absolutely. with all of – with everything. I mean, yep. we, we have to have and we have to demand – from our politicians who are weak and ineffective right now, we have to demand law and order. So we'll be talking about that. I'll be talking very, very strongly about borders and security, and it's part of law and order, but I didn't view it as much a part of law and order. I viewed it as borders before so to stop crime in this country and stop other problems and help with employment and lots of other things. We'll be talking about the wall. We'll be talking about the tremendous tax decrease that we're going to be given, the biggest of any candidate, Republican or Democrat. So we're going to be doing a major, major, major tax cut, and we're going to get rid of a lot of regulations that are just absolutely killing, just killing right. business. They're, not, they're unable to start. And very importantly, we're going to fix our depleted military. We're going to take care of our veterans. We're going to get rid of Obamacare and come up with a plan that is so much better and so much less expensive and many other things. So it's going to be a pretty large speech from